Hey, it's Michelle with The Medicine Couch. Today's video is just a little bit different. I, I want to talk about something that has been pretty heavy on my heart recently. I think most of us are just appalled with what's happening in Ukraine. But the more I read about hospitals being attacked, the more furious I get. I'm pissed in general that people are still waging war in the 21st century, but I'm also just horrified at these attacks. You know, there are rules and conventions in war. There's, in fact, 10 agreed upon rules, and six of those directly discuss healthcare workers and healthcare facilities and injured people. One rule states very clearly that medical workers, medical vehicles, and healthcare facilities like hospitals that are engaged in humanitarian work cannot be attacked, yet we're seeing it constantly. And then there was the most horrible attack, the most atrocious attack on a maternity hospital. You are literally bombing pregnant women and infants that have just been born. Who does that? I'm just, I'm just appalled that people can do that. And they're, they're cowards. As the title of this video says, that's what I feel. I feel like they are cowards. And I know that this is not only happening in Ukraine. In Syria, in their terrible civil war, hospitals are being attacked. And hospitals are attacked around the world. The U.S. also is not blameless. In 2015, a U.S. airstrike took out a hospital in northern Afghanistan killing 42 people, including 14 healthcare workers. And that hospital was critical because it was the only hospital in the region that could handle trauma cases. So why attack hospitals? Well, unfortunately, it is a very effective way to terrorize a population to break their morale and their resiliency. When a country targets hospitals, they're sending a clear signal that they're willing to do whatever it takes and that no one is safe. My heart goes out to the healthcare workers that are in these situations right now, trying to help people. Well, they have patient beds huddled in hallways, keeping them away from the windows in case there's a bomb that goes off, or working in basements, crammed, beds crammed together, and very little supplies. Hospitals are running out of oxygen and IVs and medications. They can't perform procedures like dialysis or ECMO, and I just can't even imagine the stress that they must be under. So what can be done? Well, unfortunately, it's really hard to stop madmen with bombs. But there are at least three international courts that are looking at prosecuting Putin and Russia for war crimes. And all of us need to speak out against what is happening and to condemn the policy of bombing hospitals. And I want to recognize that I know it's hard for people in Russia to protest. There have been some very brave people that have so far, and I am thankful that they are strong enough to do that. But for those of us who live in freer societies who don't risk imprisonment or worse if we speak out, we need to voice our outrage. We also need to do all that we can to help. I'm going to talk today specifically about ways you can help the healthcare system in Ukraine. You can donate money, of course, and or any medical supplies that you might have. There are several ways to get them donated. Project Cure has ongoing donations for Ukraine. Project Hope is taking donations as well. Or you can go directly to the Ukrainian Ministry of Health's webpage and look at their list of needs and donate directly to them. For those of you who have skills that you want to donate, if you want to somehow help using your professional knowledge, there are some telehealth opportunities available, especially for those who speak Ukrainian and finally, for those of you who feel incredibly convicted in your hearts, who are incredibly brave, and who have the ability to go over and help directly, there are organizations looking for volunteers. Project Hope again, Doctors Without Borders, and the Ukrainian Ministry of Health has a page where you can register with them directly. Whatever you can do to help would be greatly appreciated. 
And I'll put the links down below to the different organizations and the Ukrainian Ministry of Health's webpage so that you can scour through them and find out what the best way to help is. I just want to lift up those healthcare workers in Ukraine or Syria or wherever you are around the world who are trying to save lives in chaos. My heart bleeds for you and I just can't imagine your bravery and your stress. And I just want to say thank you for the work that you do. I also want to thank the volunteers that you see mobilizing around the world in Ukraine and in other countries to help the refugees and the injured. It really is great to see when you have cruelty from some people to see the humanity and the love that other people have shown. And finally, I want to remind all of us who are fortunate enough to live in countries that are at peace, that have a safe and comfortable bed to sleep in at night. We need to realize how incredibly fortunate we are and every day we need to give thanks for what we have. That's it for now. I just wanted to share my thoughts with you and I wanted to speak about what is happening. I wish all of you the very best. I hope that you stay safe and hope that every one of us shows kindness to our fellow human beings. I'll see you next time on The Medicine Couch. Bye.